Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the editorial analysis of 10th October 2023. Today we are going to discuss two editorials from Hindu and one from Indian Express. The first editorial talks about mental health and this article has been written from the perspective of informal workers. The issues they are facing and what are the steps government is taking in their direction. All these aspects have been uh, mentioned in this editorial. Let's get into the discussion of this. In general, if you look at our country, the aspect of ment mental health is usually ignored by the authorities. And talking very precisely, the mental health of informal workers and uh, any steps in this direction has usually been overlooked. We need to work in that direction. We need to make sure that these are the vulnerable group of people and they should have that facility to take care of mental related, uh, mental health related issues. Uh, there was a study conducted by International Labour Organization and it has been mentioned that around 15 percentage of total working adults around the world, they are facing some or other mental disorders. See, this, this survey is a matter of concern. See, 15% is a very big number. See, this mental disorder, these are affecting individual beings and it is affecting productivity. So, on the whole, if you look at it, it is going to affect the uh, both social aspect as well as economic aspect of a country. So, we need to take proper steps in this direction. The another aspect what the survey has made is, if the work area or the work environment is good if there is a decent work then that decent work uh, capabilities and environment it is directly affecting the mental health in a positive way so author is trying to say that we must make sure informal workers have these decent working influences wherever they are working and the issues like unemployment and unstable employment uh, workplace discrimination unsafe working environment these are the primary reasons for uh, a mental health disorder especially for the people who are working in, in informal sector and the noticeable aspect here is whether it whether it is unstable in employment workplace discrimination unsafe safe uh, unsafe working environment these are all manipulated uh, aspects of employment i mean i mean to say that we can easily change these aspects of uh, working scenario so what author is trying to say is we can put proper efforts in this direction to make sure that these working environments are uh, employment friendly and in turn this is going to affect for mental health in a positive way of these informal workers and let's see this from an indian scenario and what exactly we have uh, uh, what exactly we are facing from the perspective of india with respect to informal sector and the working population See, if you look at India's present scenario, almost 90% of the working population, they are working in informal sector. It shows that we are a very large workforce is under uh, informal sector and, and these people are extremely vulnerable. If you look at the reasons, in our country, there is no regulatory protection for the people who are working in informal sector and they are working in unsafe uh, working environment and they have to go for a uh, very long hours. There is no uh, 9 to 5, this kind of restriction. If you want more money, you have to push for yourself for more timing and they have very little access to social and financial protection. See, this is the biggest issue. You don't have social security or insurance sector protection for these group of people and they suffer high uncertainty and they they do face discrimination see all these things all these issues they are it, these issues are directly putting efforts on the mental well-being of these people who are working in informal sector so whatever steps we take we have to make sure that these issues are addressed properly at initial level Let's see some of the points that has been mentioned with respect to Indian scenarios. The first point is gender disparities, especially in our country, 95% of the Indian working women, they are working in informal sector. This shows that there is a severe gender disparity when it comes to the employment opportunities, uh, especially for women in our country. And the second thing is, uh, second point talks about youth unemployment. See, according to UNDP, uh, according to this data, especially the unemployment and poor quality employment, these two reasons, they, the, these two are the primary reasons uh, with respect to mental health. They are the detrimental to mental health. And in our country, youth employment is one of the highest in India. And since it is very high, the youth unemployment is very high, it is directly impacting their mental health. 
And the third point also talked about youth unemployment. See, because of this unemployment issue, the young workers, they are accepting uh, jobs which pay them less and, with, uh, and there is a poor working condition. So what it is doing is in turn, it is affecting their mental health uh, and it is leading to a mental health disorders. So we need to address the root causes here. Then the next point is, see, we have a very strong uh, demographic dividend as of now. And for next almost 20 to 25 years, the working population will be at the peak in our country but if we look at the long-term social security for these people whether it is insurance or a uh, uh pension schemes, loan facilities, all these long term social security is extremely low. And again, if we think that this is another root cause for uh, mental health disorders, uh, uh, especially for the people who are working in inf informal sector in our country. And according to the census 2011, around 33 million people, even after retirement, they are working and they are working in informal sector. And it shows that these people again they are vulnerable one we saw that women they are vulnerable and youth uh, because of unemployment they are vulnerable and even people uh, who are retired or the older people uh, they are also vulnerable due to the post retirement working and especially working in informal sector so these are the three uh, primary aspects we need to focus on especially from indian scenario and there is an absence of healthcare and financial security if we address this particular aspect if we address these kind of social security related issues directly we can impact the uh, mental health related aspects Let's see the issues the informal sector workers are facing at this point of time in our country. See, these informal workers, they face stress due to the accumulated debt. This is the primary reason for their mental stress. And the second reason, reason is rising healthcare cost. Since there is a non-availability of social sector benefits and health insurance aspect, the healthcare cost is directly affecting their mental health. And the second aspect here is uh, due to the uh, during COVID pandemic, informal workers had to uh, face a severe financial crisis and even after two years the financial recovery of covid it is still going on it is not completely eliminated the financial insecurities are not completely eliminated and these are the issues need to be focused at that point of time and even if you look at the government level the allocation for social sector schemes especially for our uh, informal workers it uh, the allocation has been reduced especially if you look at uh, mg narega even that aspect also been reduced by the government what author is trying to say is see these kind of social sector schemes it, it is necessary for government it is necessary at this point of time that we need that push factor we need more allocation so that it will give a, a decent working uh, opportunities for this informal sector and in turn it directly affects their mental health but what government is doing is it is reducing their allocation once the allocation has been reduced it is going to restrict and curtail the distribution of money or the uh, expansion of employment opportunities so it is in turn it is affecting the informal sector in our country and if you look at the ncrb data that is uh, national crime record bureau it has mentioned that the uh, the number of suicides especially in daily wage workers it is increasing again this is a matter of concern if we, if a person is trying to give up his life it means that the amount of uh, uh, the depression or the amount of mental issues he is going through uh, we can understand that so all these issues need to be addressed the one it has to address at the social level it has has to be addressed from the government perspective also through an allocation or a social sector scheme and even at the personal level these issues need to be addressed so that the issues of suicide or self-harming they these aspects can be curtailed and moving ahead the author talks about how to address this and what are the steps necessary to address this issue especially the mental disorder in the informal sector we need to focus on uh, three areas primarily. The first aspect is food security for these people who are working in informal sector and access to livelihood and financial stability. If these three factors have been addressed, then it directly impacts their well-being, mental health. And uh, how can we address this? We can address this with the help of social security. And whatever the social security we implement or we follow, it has to satisfy, satisfy three conditions. One first thing is promotional, second thing is preventive, third thing is protective. See, uh, let me explain these three aspects. Whatever the social security implemented by whether it from the government or from the private sector, it has to give some income facilities. It has to augment the income of an individual. And the second thing is, 
if there is an economic stress faced by the uh, person this economic stress uh, may be due to uh, health uh, upsets or some unforeseen expenditures so the social security should play vital role there to give that cushion factor for these people as an insurance or some loan facility so these kind of uh, uh, preventive measures for economic distress is necessary and the third point is if there are any external shocks like covid pandemic if these kind of uh, things happens then these uh, social security plans must must ensure that uh, it should give relief to these kind of external uh, shock with the help of these three aspects we can eliminate we can uh, at least try to reduce the mental health disorders in the informal sector and in our country we have a social security code the code on social security 2020 but the problem here is it is not focusing on informal workforce and this is what we need we saw that more than 90% in our country they are working in informal sector and government is going for a social security code for our country especially for the workers of our country but in in that workers if the 90% are devoid of these uh, social sector uh, initiatives then it is not considered as a successful model or the best model so we need a code of social security which covers informal sector also and here author gives a suggestion see rather than going for a social security like formal and informal better you go for universalization of social security so that every worker in the country is going to get the benefits of social security so we can address this issue in a two way the first way is universalize the uh, social security for every workers in the country and the second way is make sure that social security schemes are promotional protective and the preventive so if the social sector scheme the social security scheme should satisfy all these aspects and make it universal through with the help of these uh, these two objectives we can address the issue of uh, mental health disorders in our country especially with respect to the informal sector and finally way forward has been given by the author and he has given some uh, suggestions also here see we cannot ignore the informal workers we have to take proper steps in that direction because the uh, contribution given by in informal sector to indian economy is very huge so it is a responsibility of uh, country it is a responsibility of responsibility of government to make sure that all these informal sector people are covered under social security schemes of our country see these informal workers they are exposed to economic physical and mental vulnerabilities so it is our duty to make sure that we are working we are taking steps in that direction to lessen these vulnerabilities but what we are doing in turn is in, uh, if you look at the india's budget on mental health that has been uh, uh, reduced actually it need to be improved according to the new emerging trends in the society and there are some initiatives like digital mental health program these are all fine but the thing is how exactly the reach is going on and is it is common people able to connect with these program that is also a matter of concern so we need to work in this direction we, sh we should make sure that all these mental health program reaches to the level who are vulnerable and we should uh, focus on community based care people centered actions recovery oriented plans and human rights oriented steps all these things are very much necessary we saw that people are even commit committing suicide especially informal workers so these kind of human right oriented steps or community based approach and people centered uh, centered action these gives that confidence that security factor to those individuals who feel uh, those kind of vulnerability so one aspect is financial security uh, on, on a larger level and the second aspect is human rights based human right uh, oriented based approaches at the uh, individual level all the both the things need to be uh, supported from the government level and also private organizations also see and th there is a necessity to uh, give recognition to mental health also this aspect have been ignored even in the introduction also we talked about it this issue of mental health it has been ignored it has been overlooked now it is a time that we need to give that recognition to mental health also and we need to have more workforce in this direction also if you look at the uh, the, the experts or the counselors or the mental health Uh, related doctors it is extremely low compared to other countries so there is recognition is necessary and proper allocation of funding is also necessary to make sure to strengthen this sector
if we are successful in addressing mental health disorders in our country then we will easily can achieve the uh, sustainable developmental uh, goal number 3 that is good health and well being and once the sdg 3 has been uh, achieved we can see the ripple effect in the uh, sustainable developmental goal 8 also and which talks about decent work for all and economic growth see uh, both uh, third goal and the eighth goal they are interconnected whatever the action stake with respect to uh, uh, sdg 3 is going to uh, affect is going to show effects on eighth goal and if we take positive steps in on in the perspective of eighth goal is going to show effects on the third goal there is a reciprocative features are there so ultimately what author is trying to say is if we take actions on a mental health disorder uh, perspective it will help us to achieve sustainable developmental goals also let's move to the next editorial now the next editorial talks about uh, israel and palestine issue and in this editorial it has been mentioned that why both the israel and palestine they fight they fail to adopt two state solution those aspects have been discussed here let's get into the discussion of this the author says that only long term viable option for the conflict of israel and palestine is to follow the a solution of two two state solution this is the only thing that is going to give some solution to uh, these two uh, conflicts in the middle east region the main problem here is the arabs they think that this region belongs to them and the jews they think that this region belongs to them the main reason is jerusalem here and jerusalem is uh, uh, religiously important for both arabs as well as the jews so both the uh, group ethnic group they think that uh, that land belongs to their nationhood and this conflict it is going on from a century after first world war the britain thought britain told uh, jews that they it is going to settle down in that region but palestinian palestinians who are already uh, residing in that region they were uh, they did not accept this proposal of britain and the conflict started from that point of time and it's been almost 100 year nearly 100 years but still the the conflicts are continuously going on and world could not able to find a solution for this issue initially when uh, two solution two state solution was offered the jews accepted the partition two state solution is nothing but uh, divide the land into two parts one part will be handled and administered by jews and another part will be handled and administered by arab palestinians and it both the uh, uh, regions they will consider as an autonomous region either they can consider as a different country or they can come under or work together this kind of arrangement has been suggested initially jews they accept at the partition of land but the arabs rejected at that time now if you look at it the entire scenario has changed arab sections they are moving towards two state solution now but the israel is backing out israel is not ready to go for two state solution because israel has the upper hand as of now in that uh, ground reality and another main reason why israel is not going for a two state solution is it is scared of palestine every year we are seeing some kind of violent attack from uh, palestinians to uh, israelis so israel is concerned about you know if we give that legitimate power to the palestinian right now they don't have army they don't have any official power without all these things they are troubling us to this level if we give all this power if they get a state machinery then it would be difficult for israelis and they are going to cause much more trouble to israel this is what israel is concerned about and this is what israel is skeptical about and that is the reason uh, the israel is not ready to have a two state uh, solution at this point of time and recently from 2 3 days the attacks is going on almost 600 israelis have been dead and even both the sides they are see we are seeing the uh, casualties there see if these kind of attacks happens very frequently then it is very sure that it is very difficult to find a solution finding a solution is going to be next to impossible so primary focus should be to uh, curtail curbing these kind of attacks especially very often it is happening on israel and israel israelis are extremely conscious about the palestinians around and if you look at uh, the present scenario there seem to be many stakeholders and you know the whenever there is a discussion whenever the some process is going to happen to uh, end the rivalry between these two countries so many stakeholders come into the picture and they start giving some things they start demanding few things and they start meddling things and this is a uh, making the 
issues very uh, complicated and this is making the uh, issues especially for the authorities to find a solution let's see the uh, what who are the main stakeholders here see the important ones are palestinian people now the hamas has also been the primary player here and the idea of concept of islamic jihad and the palestinian authority which handles west bank territory and israeli voters yeah they are again like likewise palestinian people israeli voters they are also primary strike stakeholders here and also israeli government along with their coalition partners because when you are in a democracy when you are forming a government in a coalition whatever the partner says you have to listen to them also so israeli government along with their coalition partners they are also become a key stakeholders here and arab countries also the neighboring countries like jordan syria egypt they are also have that stake in that and iran iran is as of now iran is supporting hamas so iran has also become one among the uh, key stakeholders in this discussion and the uh, us especially the western bloc of especially the g8 countries which has uh, those countries are supporting israel and this western led bloc by us it has also become another stakeholder and now china also entered the picture see the more the stakeholders become the issues become more complicated so what author says is if you look at the real uh, stakeholder they, that should be israeli public and palestinian public they should decide what is going to happen and what will be the decision and what will be the implementation factor but what is happening here there are multiple stakeholders and everybody has their own personal interest here because of all these it, it is making the issues it is making the entire conflict much more complicated now the next question comes who who can change the situation the author says that it is israeli public israeli people they have that authority to change the scenario you now how do they change it see israel is a democracy so whatever people think of government is just a mirror of people's perceptions and people's aspiration if israeli public Uh, he they support the idea of palestine if they support the idea of two state solution then uh, government has no other option government has no other choice that it has to go for two state solution but is it going to happen the author says that somewhere it does not look like the israeli public are going to support this idea there are two reasons author has given a uh, two reasons for it uh, the first thing is violence activity violent activity that has been uh, inflicted upon uh, israeli people and because of this there is a trust deficit between uh, palestinians and israel and how can you find the solution when there is a violence when there is a trust factor you need to develop the confidence you need to eliminate the violence and you need to develop the confidence to uh, eliminate the trust deficit but this is not happening at the ground level and author somewhere says that because of this reason israelis are not ready to have the Uh, uh, whether the talks are to take steps in that direction to go for a two state solution here and the next question comes see now the attack is happening hamas is attack on uh, attacking on israeli uh, people and they are attacking on israeli land also so author author asks a question here will these kind of attacks is it going to uh, create palestinian state is it going to uh, give some solution for the problem no it is not there are two things you have to focus here the one thing is see israel might consider for a solution see israel has seen violence continuously so israelis might think that we are fed up of all this violence we want a peace at this point of time so israel might consider to have a peace between uh, two grouping to find solution for this kind of violence this is one possibility and the second possibility and this is very less, less likely to happen and the second thing is uh, see israel is going to reject the idea of uh, palestine or idea of giving authority to palestinian forces outrightly because what uh, israel is experiencing is palestine now they don't have economic sources they don't have any other resources even with all these restrictions they are attacking israelis at a very brutal level so just think and uh, uh, just think about the situation where palestine with its own army and it is going to be much more brutal on israelis so israel is going to reject the idea of two state solution altogether because of these attacks so if hamas is in a way of thinking that because of these attacks israel we will make sure israel is going to accept our terms and uh, uh, conditions regarding two state solution author says that no it is not going to happen it, it makes israel is more vigilant it makes israel is more skeptical regarding the attacks that is going on uh, on uh, israeli citizens 
so hamas it should stop these attacks it should uh, have a uh, dialogue process with israel then only there is some possibility to find a solution for these issues but what is the stance of hamas and what is hamas expecting out of this hamas it is not going to accept israel's right to exist in any shape so this is the hardcore stand of hamas as long as hamas is not going to accept israel then definitely we cannot have any solution for this issue so this is what making the entire issue extremely complex and the recent killing and abduction of innocent people so this will not be forgotten by israel and he said it makes sure that whatever the uh, belief system israel have that if palestinians get that power they are going to create more trouble to the israel they are going to kill the israel this thought process this ideologies it is going to be uh, strengthened with these kind of killings and abduction what hamas is doing at this point of time and if you look at it even um, Palestinian authority is con considered as a moderate force and it is handling the West Bank and even this uh, Palestinian authority it is giving support to the Hamas and it again poses that question mark to the Israel is that even we believe that Palestinian authority is moderate but even these moderate authorities moderate uh, administrative authorities even they are giving support to the Hamas it means that we don't uh, we cannot trust any of these people we cannot trust the Palestinians whether they are moderate whether they are extreme we have to maintain that distance and we have to somewhere uh, make sure that we are safe and protected in our own land so the activity of hamas it is pushing israelis to get into this conclusion and as a mute a neutral spectator as a third person if we see that issue it does not look like uh, this uh, issue is going to end very soon and with these insecurities both palestinian and jewish states living together side by side it is next to impossible and it is definitely not going to happen and the author says that see the first obstacle with respect to two state uh, two state solution it came from israel only israel occupied this west bank and gaza in 1967 there was a six day war and it was controlled by egypt before and uh, the arab countries uh, cumulatively egypt jordan and some other arab countries they fought a war against israel and in 1948 these countries uh, took control of west bank and gaza but later on in 1967 israel got the control back of these areas so this is where the first obstacle created by the israel and somewhere the palestinians they become very skeptical regarding the israel israel movement and if you look at it over the years even the israel settlements in west bank area also continuously increasing so here palestinians they were also uh, very much doubtful about the israelis and israelis don't have the trust factor on palestinians so there is a mutual distrust between both of them so how can you find a solution in this environment of mistrust and recently from a few years especially from two three decades the violence that has been inflicted on israelis by palestinians it failed to convince israel that they won't trouble them time and again there there are uh, missiles there are violent activities is going on against israeli people so it again makes sure that israelis want to maintain that distance israelis uh, don't want to give that power to the palestinian authorities so again there is a distrust between these two communities and another factor is there is a there are radical elements on both the side on Australian side and the Palestinian side and these radical elements they are also not letting uh, these two groups to come together to find a solution see all these reasons there is a trust de deficit and Israelis are not trusting Palestinians and Palestinians are not trusting Israel and Israel think that if we give authority to Palestine they are going to come and attack us and they are, that attack will be much more brutal so all these factors making it extremely com uh, complex and overall the Hamas stand Hamas tell that Israel have no right to exist in that uh, land only and this makes the idea much more uh, uh, complex than it is now it seems like there is no solution to this problem at this point of time moving ahead author says that we have only one solution to this problem the solution is it is in the hands of palestinians and they should make sure they should convince israel that we, we are going to live in peace and we are not going to cause any harm to you this thing has to be 
this message has to be conveyed to the every israeli citizen and every israeli should be convinced that yes palestinians are not going to harm them as long as this trust factor is not going to be established we are not going to find any solution for this issue see now both palestinian and israeli com communities both of them they are experiencing experiencing the pain they are facing the uh, violent uh, uh, uprisings there but the issue was now it is in the hands of israeli people because they have the control over administration so it is necessity to convince them it is palestinians they have to convince the israelis they have to tell that we are not going to harm you and how do you do it by completely stopping all these kind of violent activities whatever hamas is doing now and it is going to uh, ruin the relationship for very very long time these things need to be stopped and we need to see that reversal there should be a civilian to civilian collaboration there should be a civilian to civilian cooperation between palestinians and israelis and even author this is what he says you know with tiny bit of power hamas is doing this much of atrocities and you can imagine what can it do if israel give uh, gives a complete sovereign power to it how can israel uh, able to handle the violence or the atrocities if hamas get complete power to it see now israelis feel that they have only two options as of now the first option is see there is a moral shame the entire world is saying that you are uh, uh, exploiting uh, palestinians you are uh, uh, ruling these people beyond, uh, beyond their wills see the one first option is continue this moral shame of ruling over another another for uh, other people so this is the first option reject the idea of palestine reject the idea of two state solution keep on continue as long as possible you ca control the uh, palestinian people and the second thing is you give them authority but if you give them authority if israel give that authority to palestinians then they are going to risk their own existence so in these two options most probably second option is not going to happen they are not going to give power to the palestinian if they get the power it will be an eternal threat to the israel itself so whatever the other country says whatever moral obligations whatever moral shaming going to happen in israel it is fine as long as if they want to leave they have to go through with all this moral shaming if they compromise with this if they give if they hand over power to the hamas or any palestinian authorities then that is going to be end of the existence of israel this is what israel believe now this is what the israel uh, feel that they have these options now so as i told you the only option here is palestinian they should convince israel that they will live in peace they are not going to harm the israel and it is going to some time and it is going to years and years decades and de decade to convince the israelis and is it going to happen again it is a question mark is uh, will palestinians will be successful in convincing israel again it is a question mark and uh, see it is a duty of palestinian leadership now they have to show this guest gesture see they don't have any other option rather than convincing the israeli people so they have only this option they have to utilize this option if they want to find a solution to the existing issues and author says that it is necessary uh, there is a necessity to undo the wrong things that have been committed by uh, hamas this is it about this article let's move to the next one the next editorial is regarding a change of sports scenario in our country see initially if you look at it indian sports sector it was uh, completely focusing on cricket only now the scenario is changing and people are interested in other sports events also the author has given why is it happening and why the change is happening at this point of time uh, four reasons have been given and also in this article a lot of information regarding asian games and uh, uh, who won what medals there all these aspects have been mentioned see from exam perspective you don't need all these minor details if it's a olympic it's fine for asian games you don't have to go in detail for all these uh, tiny issues so i'm eliminating all these issues on a broader sense i'm giving an idea that uh, the changing scenario of indian uh, a uh, sports sector let's get into the discussion of this see we are all well aware of the uh, india's affection for the cricket indians are crazy for the cricket and it it is considered as a national sport that every household was so much uh, into the cricket and from the kids to the even old age people they are into this uh, match 
Usually if a cricket match is going on and everyone will be glued to the TV screens and usually see very less people on the street. This was the situation we, were, we had with respect to cricket before. Now the situation is changing. If you look at the recent World Cup match, if you look at the stadium, seats are empty there. And somewhere it shows that people, their interest is shifting. This emerging trend, it is showing that India's love towards the cricket, the scenario is changing little bit. See, the one aspect is uh, the changing scenario from uh, cricket to other uh, events. But at the same time, if you look at the Asian games, if you look at the media or the TV channels, the TV channels or the social media, the celebration of Asia winner, the Asian uh, games winner, it is, it is a celebrating. We are all accepted. We are all celebrating their win. It means that Indians are discovering other sports also. We are diverting our interest to the other sports also. So, in a one way, it is a good thing that uh, we were focusing our entire, whether it is economy, whether it is interest or a fandom, everything to a single sport sporting event. Now, it is getting diversified. The more diversified it becomes, the more opportunity it is going to be created. So, it is a good way, it is a good thing in a way that we are diversifying our sports in interest. And author has given uh, four reasons here that why this uh, change in scenario is happening. The first and foremost thing is OTT, uh, uh, the OTT entertainment platform, it has changed our taste. Before these uh, OTT platforms, usually every house will be having one television set and everybody has to sit together and everybody used to watch. Now every in mobile, there are so many applications and these applications give so many opportunities which caters your interest. So the idea of one nation and one programming, it has taken a back seat now. You can view, you can uh, expect uh, interest. And these applications are catering your interest. This is the prime reason. And the second thing is this social media, this awareness that has granted popularity to the other sports personalities also. With the help of social media, whether it is YouTube, whether it is or the Twitter or Facebook, we could able to see their performances on ground and we could able to appreciate their hard work and their contribution to the sport. So somewhere these personalities, other sports personalities are also getting popularity from chess to a swimming, from all these arenas, various sports have been, are getting recognition in our country right now. And social media is playing very important role to it. And the third is, uh, the another reason for reduction of cricket craze is the IPL rivalries. Because of IPL, IPL, now the every state, almost most of the states in our country, they have their own teams and the people are, they have dissected their interests, have been uh, channelized towards their own IPL team and it has broken the idea of unifying sport concept. Before that, we used to have one day international events where entire country, they used to sit together and they used to cheer for Indian uh, uh, players, that Indian cricket team. Now, because of IPL, entire thing has been changed. That unifying concept of uh, uh, supporting one single team that has reduced. Now it has become a fan based personalities and you are supporting one individual personality and that personality is working for, is under uh, contraction with, uh, is under contract with one particular team and you support this no matter what. See these kind of rivalries, these kind of fan based uh, personality uh, based uh, following system has changed that uh, unifying aspect of cricket matches. And another aspect of uh, any sporting event is the matter of curiosity. Now, whether it is Neera Chopra, Chopra's performance or recently that in Asian Games only, uh, the way India's relay team that they have performed, you know, these kind of curiosity, even these sports are creating these kind of curiosities. And if you look at the cricket, if it is one day match, it is almost seven, seven hours you have to spend it. But for other sports, it is less amount of time and you are getting that same kind of curiosity and uh, the same kind of adrenaline rush watching these sports event. So this is another reason where the diversification of interest is also happening. And whatever the curiosity cricket used to build, even the other sports, uh, they are also building the same kind of curiosity to the younger generation. So this is the primary reasons where the interest of cricket and unifying factor of cricket is reducing in our country. And it is a good thing that we are celebrating other sports also. See, author says that see, it is not about winning or losing. It is that whole India, we, we are coming together and we are living that moment. Whether it is a relay, whether it is an archery, whatever it is, we are enjoying that moment. Because that one single person, he is representing our country. Our emotion is behind that person. So, in a way, we are celebrating the sports, we are celebrating the country. 
and right now situation has uh, changed so much that millions of people they are sitting in front of the tv screen and they are watching india performing uh, in all these sporting activities in international platform whether it is olympics whether it is asian games indians are very proud of our own uh, sportsmen who are giving their contributions there and as i told you before whether it is squash archery swimming weightlifting every all these kind of events have been celebrated in our country and it is going to increase in future also if we look at that trend initially we had this kind of craze for a hockey after some time even we have lost that craze for the hockey and everything was concentrated to cricket only but later on uh, uh, like 6 7 years ago we started this emergence of kabaddi craze and somewhere it is a good involvement that people are uh, engaged in a Uh, these kind of sporting events and the ratings for kabaddi is also increased in television it shows that people are watching it and people were supporting this uh, uh, kabaddi events uh, in television but uh, moving ahead what we are seeing now the other sports also whether it is archery swimming squash weightlifting this is a very uh, appreciable move and this is very commendable thing initially kabaddi gave that hint that yes there is diversification diversification is possible and what kabaddi did is it filled that vacuum when there was no cricket matches but these events now whatever happening whether it is asian games or any other these athletic events it is showing that even during cricket matches these events are also getting proper viewership these events are also getting proper support from the audience it shows that diversification is happening at the ground level and every medal that was won in asian games it is considered as a pride of india we we are celebrating the winner winning of uh, uh, sportsman in all these events and it is acting as a unifying factor initially we had only cricket as a unifying factor now even even other these sports events these these are also creating that same uh, curiosity it is creating that uh, uh, same celebrity celebratory mode to have a uh, for other sports also it is unifying the nation on sports again it is a good thing and another noticeable aspect is if a indian player is uh, performing in foreign uh, pl- international podium and the uh, even neutral uh, foreign viewers they are also cheering for indian sportsman and this is a very big moral boosters and even we are enjoying this aspect also it shows that our players are getting better and better our players are respected at the world podium also it means that world is taking indian sportsmen very seriously and even the, if you look at the number of medals india is winning it is increasing india is investing now in other sports sector and eventually it takes time over the some point of time we are going to have a very strong platform and infrastructure for other sports also and these kind of moral boosting activities they, that has to be supported it is not only the domestic viewers even the foreign neutral viewers they are also supporting indian sportsman it shows the caliber of indian sports personalities see for any sportsman the recognition the cheering or the supporting uh, factor from the people it matters a lot in order to have a greater participation in order to have that uh, boosting factor for these personnel it is necessary for country men to support these people and whatever change that is happening it is a good thing and glorifying performances are players it is not only about the, about the one gaming event event it is more about sentimental memory sentimental uh, celebrations of india sports event uh, this is it about this uh, article uh, thank you for listening this pdf is available in uh, netbook study telegram channel you can download it the link is uh, mentioned in the description uh, thank you for uh, listening and i'll also post the current affairs notes also in the uh, telegram channel i'll see you guys tomorrow have a good time